Steve, you were in the thick of things uh, over there at Pandora, and you have your finger on the pulse of clients. So what exactly are clients looking for nowadays? Um, I'd say a lot of it's, it's, you know, it's evolved in the eight. I've been in Pandora for over eight years already. Um, and when I started, it was more radio announcery type stuff. But it's really, really evolved. And I mean, in the, like the first three years I was there, it evolved to conversational. And now I'd say it's even evolved a little beyond that to like the real person read and um, or a directional word I like to use a lot more often as a spec, which is casual. I, I love mm. that word. I, I think it's better yeah. than conversational these days because uh, mm -hmm. everyone's tired of hearing the, the word conversational just bounced around <laughs> in the BO world. So I like to use the word casual a little bit more because it brings in more of that real person feel. Yeah. See, when Heidi is yelling at me, I like to just give her direction and say, I'm sorry, can you be a little bit more conversational, <laughs> casual? Oh, my gosh. It Warm. doesn't really like work. It, like you're talking on the phone to a friend. Warm and friendly. <laughs> right, exactly. Well, we still get that. I mean, that feedback comes in a lot, actually, still. And I just like, oh, I've seen that so many times. But it, I, I guess it works. You know, it really is a good way to convey that message mm. to someone, especially when I'm directing via email, too. I just cut and paste that feedback right back into the email and the revision to the to the VO talent and say hey mm -hmm. make it sound like you're talking on the, on the phone to a friend so yeah. it works that's great how many talent submissions does Pandora get just an estimate and then how many do you bring on your roster I think sometimes those are really helpful just mm -hmm. to understand the numbers um, it sure. actually is encouraging at least to me um you know to know like okay it, it's not just like I'm on my lonesome not getting on with something or something it's just that right. there's a lot of people that are submitting yeah I'd say right now it's almost like that that thing in the job searching world where you're sending out a resume and it's just going off into the wind, you know, mm -hmm. um, because our, our, our applicant queue is so stacked right now. I mean, it's like, we haven't really had a chance to step on the gas because we've been so busy, but our applicant queue is like 300 plus people just waiting in there to wow. be reviewed right now. Um, wow. but on average, we probably get about 100 to 200 applicants a year. And if I do something like, you know, speak at a BO Atlanta or something like that, it just shoots up by like 75 to 100 extra right after because mm -hmm. we give it a link to apply. Um, so on average, 100 to 200 a year. And then we actually bring on maybe about 25 to 35 talents yearly. Uh, it might even shrink this year because right now our, our, I feel like our roster is stacked in a, in a pretty good way. We have like 260 mm -hmm. talents right now. So in order to bring on more talents and not oversaturate certain age ranges, I want to make sure that, you know, um, maybe removing some talents that are non-performers or just not getting any requests for a full year or, so, or a year or two, you know, people who just have been really not working or uh, haven't evolved with us or something like that. It's kind of just having, you know, the year end review thing to just to see who, who we want to keep on or not. So hopefully you're making a room for more superstars, you know, but I yeah. think I just brought on uh, about 25 to 35 new talents this year. And that was first in about a year and a half. Okay. Nice. Okay. So with everybody who is submitting, what would you say is the biggest don't mm. when submitting to Pandora? Yeah. I'd say one, one big don't is just stack up your application with tons of demos. Uh, it's fine to have tons of demos, but when you're putting in like 10 demos and not one of them is a commercial demo, then that's, <laughs> That's the most pertinent one we want. That's the one we're going to go to first. I mean, the character demo is great. The singing demo is great. All the, you know, your corporate narration demo, your promos, uh, you know, radio imaging too is just like, oh, well, we're kind of done with that, you know. But uh, right, we're seeing people apply with like seven or eight demos, but where's the commercial demo, you know? So that, that I would say would be number one. Um, the other thing is not providing a sound that you're able to, to recreate in your own home studio so you're, mm. you're making it everyone's making a demo with the producer and it's you know there's they're sprinkling some some sauce on there to make it mm. shine but if you can't reproduce your voice in that nice sounding environment on your own mm. then you know there's a little trickery going on there so we want we also make sure when we audition someone that their their home studio their home studio is up to snuff you know 